The liver plays a central role in transforming and clearing chemicals. And that's one of the reasons why it's so susceptible to uh, different toxicities and uh, adverse reactions to drug administration. You should remember that the majority of blood that is coming from the intestinal tract will go through the liver to get detoxified by the portal system. And then after the blood is filtered in the liver, it will be returned back to the systemic circulation into the caudal vena cava. So again, anything the patient uh, ingests, including drugs and toxins, uh, will potentially harm the liver if uh, the drug dose is too high or uh, the toxin has a hepatotoxic potential. Also, um, we noticed that certain drugs and toxins may cause elevation of liver enzymes in different patterns. We call it hepatocellular pattern, cholestatic pattern, and mixed pattern. So when you see that ALT is much higher than ALKFOS, uh, we call it hepatocellular injury, hepatocellular pattern on the blood work. That means that uh, ALT is a uh, leakage enzyme, and again, certain toxins will specifically damage the hepatic cells and will leak, or will predispose the leakage of ALT into the bloodstream, which you will note on your chemistry panel. With uh, other drugs or toxins, there is predominantly cholestasis as a pathophysiologic process, and in this case, your inducible enzymes such as ALKFOS will be higher than ALT. And with certain drugs and toxins, you may see a mixed uh, pattern uh, where both ALT and ALKFOS are similar uh, in uh, regards to their increase. Also, all liver toxins and uh, drugs with uh, liver toxic potential may, may be divided into two big groups. So the first one is so-called dose-dependent toxicity. Uh, the other group is idiosyncratic drug toxicity. With dose-dependent toxicity, uh, you usually see increasing uh, level of toxicity with increasing dose. Uh, it's usually very predictable, so you know that if you give a appropriate dose, there will be no toxic reactions. However, if you uh, give a higher dose, it's uh, very likely that the patient will develop reactions. Usually with dose-dependent uh, toxicity, the majority of the members of species will be affected. And this type of toxicity can be prevented by therapeutic drug monitoring. So if you ensure that you give appropriate dose, likely the toxicity will not develop. The classic example of this type of drug would be phenobarbital. So we, uh, as you may know, that when we start phenobarbital, uh, we, uh, in about two weeks, recheck phenobarbital levels in the blood. And as long as they're within the certain range, we don't change the dose. However, if the, do, if the range or the, the concentration of phenobarb goes higher than this range, then we will accordingly decrease this dose to make sure the patient will not develop signs of toxicity. With idiosyncratic drug uh, reactions or toxicity, um, they may happen at therapeutic dosages. Therefore, they're usually very unpredictable. So certain individuals will develop reactions, whereas others will not. Um, usually it's a smaller percentage of animals who uh, develops uh, who develop those reactions uh, and unfortunately drug monitoring will be not very helpful because the reactions are very unpredictable if the idiosyncratic drug toxicity does occur uh, the best uh, action you can take would be to completely discontinue the drug because we don't know for sure what actual dose cause this problem and the safest way to approach those animals would be to just continue uh, sorry to discontinue this medication uh, and prevent further damage to the liver. So acetaminophen uh, and phenobarb would be classic uh, examples of dose dependent toxicity. However, in rare cases phenobarbital may also uh, cause some idiosyncratic reactions. As far as uh, idiosyncratic drug toxicity, TMS, zanisamide, uh, tetracyclines are classic examples. Carprofen also may create some idiosyncratic reactions, especially uh, for some reason in Labradors. However, we know that if you give very high dose of carprofen to a dog, uh, there will be most likely some um, adverse reactions uh, in regards to liver function and liver injury. 
you know, pretty much there's no way you're gonna know and learn uh, all information in the world about each toxin or drug. So it's important to have at hand some sort of, um, you know, textbooks or resources maybe online that you can uh, go to and uh, look up information about certain drug or toxin.